Hi lovelies and welcome in our magical home. Today I wanted to share a couple of thoughts, ideas, tips and tricks with you on how to practice witchcraft with kids. If you are a witch parent, you might have asked yourself if and how you can incorporate your children into your witchcraft practice or even how to pass some of your gathered knowledge onto your offspring. In this video we will cover ideas on how to practice witchcraft with teens, how to introduce your younger children to the magical world and explain witchcraft to kids in a way that is easy to understand. We will also talk about possible obstacles, concerns and what to keep in mind when practicing witchcraft with children. My name is Vex and I'm a mother of a one and a half year old boy and practice as a secular green kitchen and cottage witch or as I like to call it, a sandwich. This video is a collaboration with the lovely Megan Black from the YouTube channel and podcast Round the Cauldron. She has a seven-year-old daughter and will give you more information from her experience in working magic with kids. But more on that later on. Now before we dive into this, I would like to say that it is only natural that we want to teach our kids what we know and share our passions and beliefs. But in some things in life, we have to let them find their own ways and paths. So while it is for sure lovely to show them the ropes and feed their interest, it is also beneficial to encourage them to experiment outside of what you will teach or show. Witchcraft is a highly personal path and should be explored by the individual. It is a lifestyle that grows and changes, shifts and develops. For it to be authentic and connected to one's personality, it can't be taught or imposed as a belief system. Personally, I think it is something that has to be chosen wholeheartedly to achieve a unity in your craft, personality and way of living. Also, as always, take what resonates with you and leave the rest. After all, these are only my personal opinions and experiences. Let's start with how to explain witchcraft to kids which you at some point might want to do if they see you practicing and start asking questions or want to try it out themselves. As with each of the following tips, you want to keep your kids' developmental level and understanding of the world in mind when talking to them or inviting them into the practice. Witchcraft in itself can have many different forms, shapes and ways of practice, but a lot of times it is quite anchored in living alongside nature, living mindfully and with intent, knowing your own mind and possibly involving folklore, paganism and history into it. And then of course, working with this knowledge and those energies. So you could explain witchcraft as a lifestyle and practice to get a better understanding of the world around you and find your place and personal power in it. Depending on your type of practice, you can then also tell them more about the age-appropriate techniques you personally use to do so. Don't forget to mention that there are many different forms of witchcraft out there that all have their own background, value or belief system. When talking about witchcraft, it is also important to teach your kids the difference between the witchcraft we practice and the witchcraft they see on TV or read about in books. Make sure they understand that the craft is anchored in the real world and has certain limitations, so we can see it more as a little aid for our mundane life, as opposed to fantasy witchcraft, which is wonderful and truly magical in its own form, but purely fantastical in itself. A thing to keep in mind is other people's reactions and opinions on this very personal and often misunderstood subject. Do help your kids understand that there will be people out there that don't share this kind of spirituality, practice or belief and might even condemn it. While usually I am an advocate to stick up for your choices and beliefs, I think that when it comes to kids it is not always the best policy for them to talk about being a witch around other kids. People, and especially kids, can be quite mean or maybe innocently tell things they heard to other adults that might make this into an unnecessary big deal. This can easily lead to bullying and I'm sure we all want to shelter our kids from that. So depending on their age level and understanding, instead of referring to practices specifically as witchcraft or spells, you could find other wording for it. In essence, witchcraft is for a big part science, practical living skills, traditions and a bit of psychological techniques. 
So for example, instead of speaking about spell work, you could use a less loaded word like wish or blessing. If you have older kids that understand that this way of life will not necessarily be understood by everyone in every part of the world, you can explain it just as it is, so they can make an informed choice to practice openly or in the privacy of their own home. While at this topic, you could also model some open-mindedness for other people's choices and beliefs. After all, your kids might not choose the witchcraft path, but find their own spirituality, lifestyle or religion. Invite them into your practice if you want to do so, but don't force it. Now on to the lighter and brighter topics. Hands-on ways of how to practice witchcraft with kids. Teach them the basics, but make it fun and kid-friendly. Techniques like centering, grounding, shielding, meditation, intention setting, visualization or manifesting are not only things that come in handy for a witchcraft practice, they also help you immensely in dealing with obstacles or difficulties in daily life, regulating emotions and feelings, regaining control over your thoughts and actions and much more. Visualization can be done in form of fun little guided fantasy journeys, where they just lay with their eyes closed listening to a story you tell or read, or even an appropriate YouTube video or audiobook. Then you can ask your kid to describe what they can imagine and feel when listening to your words, colors, scents, peoples, sceneries and so on. This is a wonderful way to fuel their imagination and creativity too. To help them practice meditation, focus on simple breathing exercises and leave the too complicated explanations at the door. When doing grounding, resort to very straightforward forms like earthing, for example. Practice mindfulness by pointing out the different sounds of the birds they can hear during a walk in the forest or how the sunrise shine through the green leafage just so. Irregardless, if you consider it witchcraft or just psychology, it is surely a wonderful gift for kids to get taught the power of positive thoughts and affirmations as a way to manifest your desired reality. In witchcraft, we often use positive affirmations in how we word our spells or set intention. And outside of spells, we can teach our kids that the power to believe in yourself can truly be the greatest power of all. You can nurture that habit or cornerstone to spell work by doing regular affirmations with them. This will also tremendously help to cultivate self-love and self-worth in them. Modeling them how to set goals and intentions for yourself or word certain wishes in your life and then achieving them with a positive outlook and determination is another great way to show how magic can work. A lovely way to get your kids involved is to celebrate the pagan holidays of your specific path. Not only have they historic value and many fun traditions, depending on your area, of course, but they are also based on a rural year. Therefore, symbolisms, activities and rituals tied to them are very in tune with the prevalent energies of the season, area and time of the year. It is a wonderful way to teach your little ones about ancient cultures, their lifestyle and food habits, how food is grown and nature changes, what people used to believe in and where our traditions nowadays stem from in their core. And it is a great time to show that we can draw conclusions for our own lives from what is happening in nature. When in spring new life awakens or in autumn the world prepares for rest and tranquility, we can do the same with things in our lives. Creating little kid or family-friendly rituals around those topics is a great way to teach living in tune with Mother Earth and our own emotional, spiritual and physical needs. A fun thing that I as a teen witch would probably have loved would be witchcraft surrounding makeup. It could be a fun activity to teach your kid how to make skincare products, lip balms, soaps or other enchanted products for personal care. This offers a great opportunity to teach them more about herbalism or the significance of certain herbs in folklore and magic and maybe infuse their daily care products with a self-love charm, a confidence spell or whatever else they need in those tumultuous teenage years. Plus, it is a valuable lesson on sustainability and a great life skill to have. And while we are at the topic of potion making, a very educational activity to do with your kids is of course kitchen witchery. Not only is it so beneficial for kids to learn how to prepare food and choose nutritious options, it also gives you the opportunity to show them how you can infuse everything mundane with intention. 
and showing gratitude for the ingredients that were produced with hard labor. This also gives you a great segue into herbalism and teachings about pagan cultures and traditions. Arts and crafts in general are a wonderful way to include your kids into your practice. Not only do you get quality time with them doing something creative and enriching, but you can also use this time to listen to their worries and wishes while your hands are busy creating something magical. Depending on what they need in their life, you can then create a little protection amulet, a bad dreams begone sachet with a sleeping spell, a mosaic mirror for self-love or an enchanted bracelet for courage and confidence and much, much, much more. If you practice some form of divination and your kids show interest in that, there are many kid-friendly ways to teach them some basics. Any form of scrying, for example. It is a very relaxing and calming activity to lay on a warm summer's day in the grass and just cloud gaze. You can then look for oddly shaped clouds and make up your own stories of the different formations you see. There is also a lovely tarot coloring book that you can use with them and while they color, you can teach them more about the meaning of the specific card. If your children are a bit older and more reflective, you can introduce them to a simple one-card pull and show them how they can use the cards to help them deal with a certain situation in their lives. It teaches self-reflection, forms a questioning mind and definitely aids emotional intelligence. If you have a collection of items that you use in your craft and your kids see you work with them, chances are they might be interested in trying them too. Of course, some of those items might be sacred to you or you would just not like them to break, get lost or covered in sham. But luckily, there are many witchcraft items for little ones on the market. For example, lovely tarot cards with kids-friendly motives or easy-to-comprehend books for younger readers that explain basic concepts of witchcraft. You can find some suggestions linked in a handy young witch kit in the description box below. A lovely idea would also be to go thrifting with your kids. Often you can find true treasures for a bargain and you can use this moment to teach your kids that if something is special to them and they give meaning to it, it can be a very powerful item, regardless of its price. Of course, technically you don't need to buy anything for witchcraft as Mother Nature so graciously provides us with all. It only takes a little trip outside and some collecting of odd sticks, stones, herbs, shells or feathers and they can make their own supplies and have a fun, witchy crafting afternoon. Rune stones, offerings, altar decorations, wands and much more. Respect for nature is something that is surely a good thing to instill in a child or teen. Especially seeing that we are wrecking this planet at the moment and with it the home for our future kids and grandchildren. So lots of outdoor time can help them create a bond to nature and all its living beings. On the holidays you can leave offerings for the forest spirits or birds, plant a witchy herb garden and let your kids do their own little potted garden, teaching them about life cycles, birth, death and rebirth. During the warmer month, go foraging for herbs that you can use in kitchen or cottage witchery and in general the natural world is a great place to practice living mindfully and aware. Get up close and personal with nature, learning by doing. The best classrooms don't have four walls, in my opinion. This is also a nice opportunity to model respect to the natural world by taking only what you need, preserving and protecting and giving back. If you yourself practice with an altar, your children might find that space fascinating, especially if it is filled with a lot of interesting looking things. But you might not feel comfortable having them intrude into your sacred space. Especially as we all know how quickly things get lost or break. So it might be a fun idea to give them their own little space to set up things that are important in their craft. This can be a shoebox or an entire top of a dresser. It is so much fun to help them decorate according to the seasons or holidays, maybe with some treasures that you found on your last nature walk and see what items they deem important and sacred for themselves. If you have a teen interested in witchcraft, you could also nurture their interest more by giving them related presents for their birthday or other holidays. For example, a very first book of shadows or shadow work journal, crystals that they are drawn to or maybe a little organizer for supplies or herbs. 
I also have linked you some ideas below for great gifts for witchcraft beginners. Witchcraft is neither white nor black. It is about life and death, about diving deep, facing your own shadows and seeing yourself and the world around you in all its colors and shades. Some areas of it might be uncomfortable to talk about, but I believe that sticking to what is and not sugarcoating will help children understand the world better. It will show them that you respect them in their autonomy as another person and inspire them to become more self-sufficient, interested and take responsibility for their own actions. Are you witch parents or witchy caregivers too? Are your little ones interested in your craft and do you let them practice with you? Also, if you have any more tips, tricks or advice, please let us know in the comments below. If you would like to see more on the topic of witchy parenting, give this video a thumbs up and I will be speaking more about how to find time for your practice with little ones around, what to do if your teen is interested in witchcraft but you are unsure of it, and other related things. Don't forget to check out Megan's video over on her channel. You can find lovely videos on important topics in the witchcraft community, witchcraft advice and spells that Megan and her daughter perform together. In her video, she will give you very hands-on advice from experiences that she has made, how she incorporates magical teaching into momentary homeschooling, and how not to force your pagan beliefs onto your child, but teach them to be open-minded and choose their own path. I wish you and your little witchlings a wonderful magical day. See you soon!